have returned here into the winner's match between uh, two great Zerg players who've made it this far. It's time to introduce who they are because things are going down. Things are going down, Rifkin. Things are going downtown, Tempo. Spotty here in the bottom left corner of the map. He's red, he's Zerg, he's gone for quite an early pull, and this time, without gas, it's going to be Flipside Tactics, red Zerg player, John Snow. And his opponent in the top right, representing Europe, playing through the lag, and the late times and all these things, it's going to be the blue Zerg, Tomicus. All right, well, while this is going on, Tamikus has gone for a pool first with his own gas, not investing in a hatchery just yet. So, John Snow's going to actually invest into this attack. I don't know how well this is going to go, as uh, he should have the tools to deal. Man, that guy in the audience would not shut the fuck up with his claps. I know, he must have been so impressed. He's going to be okay for this. The gas is what's really going to give him the edge. If he holds on initially, then he'll have speed over his opponent, and maybe even Banley's beyond that. But for a time, he'll have to drone stack, and for a time, he may take a couple of losses, but this really, I don't imagine, is going to get too out of hand. I would hope not, at least. No, this is like the hard counter, almost. Uh, he went for a 14-14 himself, or maybe even a 15-15. Didn't make that expansion, so it's not like he even had anything to cancel. And speed is going to be on the way. So Jon Snow needs to kind of play this a bit more safe. Can't take that early expansion like he did uh, earlier. And, uh, oh, he's going to get a drone, actually. So, hey, not bad. Focusing drones now. That's actually really smart. Two of the lings were just distracting those other lings. And then he got two drone kills. Four drone kills, actually. Wow, I didn't see that. All right, down so two, and then uh, two were killed in the auto attack. Right, but this puts them both on even footing, except with the advantage of gas for Tamika. So, if they're mm -hmm. both in the same economy and both producing the same amount of work or, or units, you'd imagine, okay, well, it trades out fairly even. But with speed on his side and the fact that Jon Snow is starting to invest in drones again, this going to get messy. He's hoping that the queens will carry him through the ling fights, and queens admittedly bring a lot of damage to these fights, but will it be enough to overcome that speed disadvantage? Hmm. A very interesting response here oh, out of Jon Snow. Roaches. Gonna drop down that Roach Warren, yeah. So, if he does get a good amount of Roaches out, he should be able to be fine and be safe to take his expansion if he wants to. I don't know if he's just gonna make a Roach Warren and then try to push with Roaches, but it's almost a just a big safety measure, I assume, if he's not getting the speed with it just yet. But this is very interesting, you know? Uh, I don't like a small number of Roaches and against Speedlings because you try to go and you do the attack, you don't have the economy to make enough roaches to actually deal with the amount of lings that can get pumped out. So we'll see if he does decide to do that, or if he's just gonna secure his third with, or secure his natural with it rather. Um, yeah, with no speed, I don't know. I just don't, I don't see him trying to push and win with it. It's more so a security measure. But if I could be wrong, I could be wrong. I just, I don't know why he would push out with a bunch of roaches. It'd be very dangerous. And there we go. Expansion already up for, uh, on the way up for Tommy Kiss. And Jon Snow gonna drop one down of his own. But Tommy Kiss is going for a Bailing Nest. I don't think he knows about the, uh, Roach Warren. Just a side note, by the way, uh, cause I don't remember when we came back from break. Did we discuss what happened with the other part of the bracket yet? Oh! Yeah, yeah. That, that would be All news right, so for the viewers, I'd say. Yes, yes. Um, it was Roof. Roof, uh, forfeit. Uh, right after. Said it was getting a bit too late and the lag was... Uh, rough for him, so to play two more series would be probably on the brutal side of things for him. Right. So, so this match... Well, it's important mm -hmm. is, yeah, this match is the winner's match, but there will actually not be a loser's match then as a consequence, and uh, yes. we'll go straight to the finals afterwards, so no downtime for either of these guys. However, Darton passes Roach just looking for a couple of kills, drives off the gas mining uh, drones. I mean, Tamikus is better in economy. He's uh, He got his hatchery out much sooner than his opponent. The drones are looking fantastic, but is he going to be able to deal with these roaches? They're not fast roaches. Off of creep, they're going to waddle across the map very slowly. I mean, if Tomikus got really spooked by this, he could throw down enough spine collars to hold. But as I'm sure you've learned through experience, Tempo, in the early game, low amounts of roaches are actually fairly susceptible to high amounts of zerglings. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that Tomikus actually went in to go for the kill, or at least get a bit of damage done with those lings just then. Because now he has to deal with these roaches, and if he had those lings that he had that just died, 
Uh, he would be in a much better position, but he does have the spine crawler up, and this is a decent amount of roaches. They can bypass that spine crawler, but Lings will try to keep him in place, though. Oh, this was kind As of you can see the hide. surface area. Yep. Yeah. Well, Did he hide actually, like, completely? Yeah, the vision straight up missed uh, those roaches hiding in that little nook. So he's probably thinking, where are those wow. roaches? Wait, they're defending? No, they're not. They're coming across the map. And these links are on the wrong side of the field. He'll kill the hatchery of his opponent. Two queens won't stop this. But back at home for Tomikas, he's got all these roaches now barely in. Uh, his natural base now under attack. He started the advance. Mike off on a couple of these uh, spine cars back at home. Cameraman's still on the other side of the map. But Tomikas. Yeah. There we go. Finds his opponent struggling through the roaches. So he does take out the spine crawler pretty much immediately. Candling's now hold. There's that, that nook, that cranny, that photon cannon spot is so sick. For yeah, I always thought it was only for photon cannons. <laughs> but apparently it's a roach haven as well. But this is scary. Uh, this is the fact that, okay, the links do come back home. If those links didn't come back home, then Tamika would have had to invest trouble. into a bunch more links, which would mean that Jon Snow would get that sick, sick drone advantage. So one of the key uh, so. things for Tamikas at this point is he's got to recognize, man, I'm ahead in the game. How do you get further ahead? Take that third base. Now he's going for Spire mm -hmm. to transition to Mutas, and that's okay. I'll give him mid-map control, but I really think if he wants to extend his lead, take that third base. Because Jon Snow's going to really struggle to knock it down, and Jon Snow's going to really struggle to take his own. Yeah, with the Mutas coming on the way, that is really important to note. And uh, Jon Snow may not even decide to go for that, but... He, I, I assume that he will. The fact that he's getting his lair hasn't dropped any evos just yet, though. But Tamikas' mutas are going to be coming out, and that's going to make it so hard for Jon Snow to actually secure that third. But he was able to squeeze out a lot of drones before Tamikas was. So, yeah. It's just more about recognizing what is on the way. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. If he doesn't go for that third now, he's never going to be able to get the creep over there to get the spore crawlers to deal with the mutas. Well, Roaches are going to pick up a couple of the links. I mean, it's, I, I really don't like that he's putting the focus solely on the mutas. I, I think this could go well for him for a time. I don't know if this will be game ending, but that third base is probably the best way to get ahead in the matchup regardless. Because to this extent, this is to me to be because it's going to solely focus on mutas. Oftentimes we see yeah. players go you know, 8 to 10, you transition back into uh, Roaches afterwards, but... If he's sticking on two bases like this, and he's going to all-in with the Mutas, I don't know how well this is going to go, Tempo. I feel like three well-positioned support callers at each base should keep Jon Snow fairly safe. Yeah. yeah. And he's going for it now, just now. Got, he wanted to get the Mutas out first, and then he goes for it, but Jon Snow's third is already on the way. And if he does realize that it is Mutas, he's going to attack with those Roaches and force those Mutas to come back home. But I feel like Tamikas' best bet is to try to cancel this third, uh, minimize as much damage as possible from the counterattack of the roaches and then um, you know get his third up of his own and get ahead that way but if he had done it earlier man right he would uh, already have that third up but he does uh, get the higher count of mutas which he may need to actually deal with these roaches which are gonna have speed but don't have any upgrades there goes Tamikas he may not even have time to go to that third uh, so it's a, it's a weird base trade scenario that's cropping up with this the, the spine collar count at home and these links might be able to hold for a small time, but the mutas really need to come back because Tamikas isn't yeah. going to outrace these roaches. Yeah, I mean, there's not enough spine crawlers at all. And with the all of his mutas on the other side of the map, Jon Snow is going to sustain a lot of damage here. But Tamikas is drones. There's nothing at home. There's links coming out, and you know how links do against roaches at this number. No, no not yes. like we were talking about earlier. Not at all. No, Jon Snow is actually looking to win this game if that's the case. The Mutas have mobility and they're great for harassing, but they don't have the building killing capabilities of these roaches. So back at home, we see the spore cars burrow and Tamika's turning around, but is it too late? The drones are still cycling through and they're not exactly fighting. God, even a surround with the drones might not be a terrible idea, but he doesn't have a third base to fall back to. The Mutas are doing what they can very slowly. Glaveform bouncers just don't hurt very much against these armored units and... Ah, uh, he's just lost all the drones. Tamikas, I almost feel like, threw this game. I don't know why yeah. he thought he could outbase trade Roaches, but this is a severe misjudgment on his part. Yeah, and now he's going to feel the wrath of those Roaches splitting up to that third location of his... He just doesn't have any mining. I mean, where did his drones go? I think they just went on the, the Great Pilgrimage of uh, 2015. I think they're actually... The Great Pilgrimage are dead. The Great. I have no idea where they are. I think, oh, there they are. They're stacked up so heavy that I didn't even, I thought it was an overload on the minimap. <laughs> but they're not for long in this world. No, sadly not. Not at this rate, at least. Mm-mm. They're the last remaining 14. So that's just, that's it. Johnson Snow secures his third. Just 
puts up a bunch of spore crawlers. He can make so many spore crawlers and still have more drones than Tamika's here, and just he's completely fine. Uh, this is uh, this is I believe, like you said, this is it. John Snow. I don't see any way Tamika's can actually come back from this. Well, it was a uh, interesting no. game. Uh, we have the massive amount of queens. Given this is kind of funny. I I like to reference Namshar a lot. Uh, Namshar mm -hmm. is our European Zerg friend who likes to go like nine, twelve queens as response to mutas initially. Seeing Jon Snow do this later is kind of sad because you might be thinking like, why doesn't he just go in faster? It's our hydralist. That's because yeah. the economy's been disrupted through this. The harass was good, and uh, he did kill quite a few drones with the mutas. So I mean, job well done in that regard, but. Uh, Queens just, will get the job still, done in a pinch. Yeah. yeah, Queens will do a great job, and you get to spread the creep for your roaches as well, and then when you want to attack, you just have that extra speed boost a little bit more uh, across the map. So, I... Uh, Tamikas is going to try to drone back up here, but the problem here is that he's just broke. He can't mine enough to even make enough drones uh, to keep up with the drone production of Jon Snow, who will be saturating three base. And I wouldn't even be surprised if we saw a Nidus Worm come out of Jon Snow just to do it, but... Uh, this is just a great position to be in. Three base, you got it, you defend against the Mutas relatively well, and got a lot of damage done on your own. Uh, you're doubling the drone count a little bit more than doubling the drone count of your opponent. And, uh, double Gs are gonna come out of Tamikas and Jon Snow. Flip side tactics. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the ASL Prime League uh, Season 4, Group B. This is the winner's match. The winner of this is going to move on to the round of 16. The loser is going to be going to face off against Kelazor, a Terran player who did fall uh, to Tamikas earlier today. But uh, without further ado, let us get on with the introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, spawning in the bottom left corner of the map, playing for Yoey Fl Wait, what? <laughs> Flipside tactics, sorry, a little bit of a mistake, not a big deal. It's gonna be the blue Zerg player. John Snow. Snow. And his opponent in the upper right. It's green, he's Zerg. He's looking for a victory, Tempo. It's gonna be Tommy Kiss. I wonder I um I forgot to check. If he was on a <laughs> Czech, he's from the Czech Republic. Oh boy, I'm so good. Anyway, I forgot to check if he was on a team. Um, I feel like I remember seeing that he was, but I, one of the more unknown teams, I think maybe just based in Czech Republic. But um, I was going to say, yeah, okay, so DK. I don't know how to say it. It has a bunch of those accent marks on all the letters, so I don't know how to pronounce it, but um, I'll try Derava Kapsa. So, yeah. I don't know if that's the case. That's how you say it. Anybody from Czech Republic, teach me, teach me your ways. Because I definitely butchered that one. So, I was going to say looking for a team, but I believe he actually is on one. Maybe it's a clan, who knows. But he's definitely trying to make a name for himself. Because he's been pretty much busting his ass in a lot of these qualifiers. All, any of these weekly tournaments that he can get, his, get into. I've seen him just in these brackets uh, quite a bit more often now. And... We'll see if he's able to take first place in this group, as this is the winner's match. I'm seeing here that he... Oh, I didn't see if he went for the hatch gas or... Yeah, I think it was hatch gas pool uh, for both players. As we see the gas getting mined already. Uh, no mainly nest here for Jon Snow just yet, but it will go down for Tomikus. Hmm. Well, the... Sorry, I was uh, a little bit distracted, my bad. Uh, I, I guess for the courses too, you wonder going into game th two here, maybe Jon Snow takes the 2 out, right? Is that mm. so bad for Tamikis? Because uh, wouldn't he then be playing against... Oh, uh, no, wait. Kelser is North American. I take that back. Never mind. I, I, I always forget oh, the Kelser. Uh, if it would be on EU. Yeah, then I realized now Kelser is actually North American because... Uh, yeah. So never mind then. I thought server differences might be more preferable, <laughs> right? But I strike, yeah. strike that and ignore it. Um. But yeah, so Tamikas has got a hard fight to make. He had a really nice game one. But as he gets through this, okay, his Banley Nest finishes up here. Hopefully, uh, 
we no, it's not even a baneliness and protection. I take that back uh, for Tamika. So that's John Snow. I'm looking at. Yeah, he's already got his baneliness yeah. done, so he should be able to do some good damage here. But John Snow is going to be able to match it, and this is where it starts coming down to control, and this is where that Europe factor starts coming in. Mm hmm. I'm wondering how it will go for him. Uh, oh, it looks like Jon Snow wants to get aggressive himself, so they're both going to be trying to get aggressive. But Jon Snow gets the first look at the lings, and I uh, guess why not play the defensive game? He's making a ton of bane lings at home. Oh my God, this is so scary, man! Uh, and, uh, that first bane oh. connect was okay. Needs yeah, I don't think it was enough, man. No, nah, Jon Snow's not the one with all the bane lings. Charging forward, it's going to be a little bit hard to because has to back up and make his own. Just finish his hatching. But the question is, you know, you can get the greatest bailing hits in the world, but do you have enough links afterwards? Do you have to over-dedicate the bailings for this? So far, his bailings are really reaching nothing. Great defense out of Jon Snow. That Queen Snipe was really nice, too. Yeah. Jon Snow holds us perfectly fine, uh, at least so far. You know, it can always change in one bailing explosion. He's uh, at 32 uh, uh, drones, so he is a head economic. Oh, man. He holds. The control, though. Yeah, Please he goes holds down, but that's nothing. Like, He's 32 drones over 25 right now, and both players are yeah. still just legs. It's going to come down to one really good bailing connection versus one really bad bailing oh. connection at this rate, but soaks that hit, some bailings. Ah, it's going to try and get him. bad. Oh, not going to get him on the retreat. And there are no bailings here for Jon Snow. He needs to make a few more because uh, even more lings are coming out of Tummy Kiss. And Jon Snow, there he goes. He's going to morph them, though. All of them. He just makes a wall. So that the links can't really get in and don't have any specific ones to target but it is kind of a desperation move because he doesn't have links of his own in order to actually deal with these links at the moment oh my god this is crazy uh he didn't go into the main though john snow has a ton of bane links <laughs> and uh, he was gonna actually do that he could have got so many links particular muscles in the lower half of the, my body tend to clench up watching bane link wars like this but yeah. uh Still, I think a lot of this comes down to the fact that Johnson's got that nice drone lead. It doesn't need to buy, buy a lot, it just has to be by enough, and eventually you will overtake your opponent. Now, Units County Station at the moment, I mean, yes, there's some more Banelings on the way, but it's Jon Snow who's still got Banelings. Well, Tamika's just trying to yes. make any. Mm -hmm. And he's going to try to come on in again. He's sending them out one by one now. A little bit better connections than he was getting earlier. Jon Snow, guys, okay, he's going to say, four Banelings there. You do not want to stack up your Banelings at all in these situations. It's That's really... the last Baneling of Jon Snow once again. Really unfortunate that Spine wasn't get those hits off. Uh, he's trying to keep this alive because it's good for zoning, but more bailings and a lot more bailings on the way. I guess the question next for what comes out of this is who starts transitions? Uh, if this game mm. doesn't straight up end, sometimes you'll see players try to transition to Roaches, maybe sneak out the Mutalisks behind it, but right now it's too much pressure and both players are still investing in 22 Zerglings, 19 Zerglings just constantly. Zerglings, Zerglings, and more Zerglings. Just nothing but Zerglings at all, and Jon Snow is recognizing that at all and as well, and I think he's going to try to go on the offensive himself. Well, Tamika's trying to get a bit of a counterattack done. Jon Snow does luckily have that spine crawler at home, but it is hanging on by a thread. Jon Snow now out of position has to go back home. Not going to try to do a counterattack himself, and he's going to sustain a lot of damage here. I oh, can't believe that spine's still standing. Uh, I don't even know. Goes down. Okay. Good night, my sweet prince. You know, this, is, this is starting to look less and less bad for Tamika. He still has a lot of bailings he's going to have to deal with one way or the other, but... It's not looking so overwhelming anymore. It was a little bit, uh, I don't know, suffocating, I think, before. But yeah, a little bit more breathing room. Got to get that one bailing connect, maybe. Oh, links. Yeah. That was good. Four links. Uh. Counterattack <laughs> is how, ignored. Whoa, like, whoa. He went straight past this. Tamika's onto that mineral. I guess figuring, yeah, two, two queens probably be more than enough of the transfuse on this. But still, it keeps bringing Jon Snow back home. And we finally have someone try to transition out of this. We got drones on one side. We got the Roach Warden coming down here as well for Jon Snow. 14 drones as well. If Tamikis does not uh, let off on this, this could be a bit of an issue. However, the banelings of Jon Snow should be able to hold if he has good control. And we know that he does have pretty decent control here. Oh! Gonna lose three banelings to two, and he's gonna be on the offensive. So he's just gonna get a bunch of drones out while keeping Tamikis busy, and then just probably floodlings when he realizes what it is that Tamikis. Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. oh no! Well, Rifkin! M -m 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 Monster kill! <laughs> Like I mentioned, it's one of those things where it might have just come down to the Bailing Connects, and that one certainly has led uh, one direction. Big surround on the hatchery. Oh. John Snow looking to take a 2 -0. Nice Bailing Connections on the other side of the map, but still not good enough to make us down half the worker count, and John Snow uh, so close to victory. He's got roaches on the way here as well to make sure they can snipe off any future Banelings. One basing it. GG. Woo! Woo! <laughs>